Okay. Okay, thank you everyone. Thank you. Thank you everyone for coming. And um, we've got the first of our guest lectures today. And I'm just going to introduce you to Dr. Oloshola Ajide and just read out a little bit of a, a little biography. So Shola has over 22 years of experience within sustainability, corporate social responsibility and partner development settings. He holds a PhD in management from the Robert Gordon University, our very own RGU. His research interests include CSR, corporate community engagement, developmental partnerships, non-profit organisation management, oil and gas industry, sustainable development and blended learning. In addition, he holds a master's degree in management information system, a postgraduate certificate in research methods, a postgraduate diploma in business administration and a higher national diploma. Currently, he doubles as the Christians Against Poverty Job Club Centre Manager at Fountain of Love in Aberdeen and is also the Head of Partnership Development at the RCCG FOL in Aberdeen. He's responsible for overseeing social community projects that caters for the needs of lonely and isolated elderly persons, a job club for the unemployed persons seeking to get back into employment, and a restorative justice project that helps rehabilitate prisoners back into the society with social welfare, also providing transportation to families of those in prison. Prior to this time, he was a lecturer at the Aberdeen Business School here at our very own RGU, where he taught various management courses. Earlier, he was a lecturer at INTI University in Malaysia, where he taught management courses as well. He has consulted for businesses and not-for-profit organisations in the UK and Nigeria. He is a member of the British Academy of Management an associate member of the Energy Institute UK. He is the current founding president of the Nigerian Environmental Society United Kingdom chapter. Furthermore, he is a member of the coordinating team for the RCCG UK School of Leadership, Scotland region. In addition, he is a member of the team overseeing the Scotland chapter of Equip, a Dr. John Maxwell organization. Previously, he was the Assistant General Secretary of the Nigerians in Diaspora Organization, Malaysia Chapter, 2009-2010. Since migrating to the UK in 2011, Shola has been actively involved in the community by volunteering with Scottish registered charities and sits on the Board of Trustees of two registered charities. He actively mentors professionals across Africa. And something else that's not written here, he's a very good speaker. So let's welcome Dr. Oloshola Ajide. Thank, Thank, Thank you. Thanks for, um, Mitchell, for inviting me along to speak um, to us today. Um, my hope and expectation today is you go out from this presentation uh, you'll be able to have a new perspective to life and that will shape and drive you know, your decisions as public relations practitioners, which uh, you are, I hope you, are, you want to become. All right, so today I'll be speaking on corporate social responsibility in public relations. It's very interesting because even my research thesis, my research, I used is a combination of corporate social responsibility and public relations, and I, the framework of Grunig et al. Actually, my research extended the work of Grunig, which is a public relations uh, core uh, person. Now, <sighs> today, we'll be looking at thinking quotes. What is CSR? What is public relations? Ethical orientation, ethics and the public relations models, tests, ethical message development, examples of ethical failures, what's your view on the corporation, um, examples of 
CSR process in Aberdeen, which is part of the things she, which I read, that I'm involved in, and we'll have, have conclusion. Now, straight to it, can you all please look at the quotes? And what can you, what message, or what do you understand by that? Did you ever expect a corporation to have a conscience? When it has no soul to be damned and no body to be kicked, and by God it ought to have both. That was the quote by the first Baron Tuno, who was the Lord Chancellor of England in 1731 to 1806. In the corporate economies of the contemporary West, the market is a passive institution. The active institution is the corporation, an inherently narrow and short-sighted organization. The corporation has evolved to serve the interest of whoever controls it at the expense of whomever does not. Now, if you look at these first two quotes, you'll be asking, so what am I driving at? What is it I want to achieve with that? As public relations professionals, you will be working for corporations and you will be responsible for formulating, designing, planning its corporate communication, its corporate image, begin to what you're going to project about that particular organization. But you see, if you don't understand the, the perspective of the fact that corporations as they are, even though they don't have a soul, but are actually an expression of who we are. It's because you are the person who will be driving that image and whatsoever it's your philosophical stance will be what actually the organization will be turning towards. Do you get that? So that's the key thing why you need to understand the fact that corporations are the key thing we're looking at here because they will be employed by they will employ some of you, or some of you will start your own companies and also employ some other persons. <coughs> More about thinking quotes. What you see and hear depends on a good deal or where you are standing. It also depends on what sort of person you are. In actual fact, you see, for those of us who have lenses who are, who are like, like myself, whatever you see from the lenses, the lens actually only magnifies what I see. Do you get the point? So who you are as a person actually is the key thing here because it's who you are that you're going to project, even in your role as a professional, as a public relations practitioner. We're going to see that later when we look at some of the uh, philosophical underpinnings of that. We don't see things as they are. We see them as we are. You see, these quotes keep putting the fact that the touch light today actually is not really on the corporations, but on you as a professional, a public relations professional. I hope this uh, uh, will get us uh, thinking. Michelle, I hope you are timing me. Because my time are here seems not to, not to be working as I, as I desire to be. So, what is CSR? Maybe I should, I don't have time. I would have just closed this and asked and engaged the class. Uh, so, what is CSR? Let's have a wee quote. Is it going to go off? I hope it does. You press it again. I press it again. Display. Display all. Oh. Okay. Oh, I press oh. it. I press it. Okay. So, what is CSR? Let me start with you. <laughs> um, we're a company kind of portrays themselves to the public, so by trying to do charitable things. Um, okay. So, how they get their image across. Okay. So, they might link with charities in order to. In respect from okay. customers and things like that. Okay, so key things you're making there, the way a company projects itself. Yeah. One, 
link to charities yeah. talk and the way they want the people to think. Yeah. Now that's the key thing. Not the way they are thinking, but how you want to control them to think. And that's the key thing for me when it comes to public relations. It's more like an image consultant that wants to whitewash. We are doing some things and it's, it's, it's a responsibility, so to speak, to do what? To change. And that for me is critical because in my thesis, I look at the issue of discourse. The issue of power, which I think you're going to consider in one of your models. The fact that as a public relations person or a corporate communication person, corporate community, uh, communication specialist organizations have power. And which you've spot on there to make people to think, not really what the people are. So based on the quotes that I started with earlier, is the fact that the way the organization is, is that the way the organization is seen by the people in the community? So thank you for that. And um, so corporate social responsibility, even though you have given us a slant to pub, push it into public relations, is principally being concerned about four key things of every organization. That organizations have what? They have economic responsibilities that organizations have legal responsibilities, they have ethical responsibilities in the society, and that these organizations have a role to play in... Sorry, sure. Could you press it again? It's again. Not, it's not so, th that's the issue of what is looking at Carol's perspective in 1991. Okay, it, it's coming back. So you look at that, that is important to perform. Organizations see themselves as economic beings to raise, you know, generate income, create activity for the common good of the society, maximizing the earning per share of its investors. If it's a shareholder company, now, these are pretty much what we look at. So as corporate social responsibility, you, organizations have economic responsibilities, they have legal responsibilities. In other words, they are supposed to obey the law. Huh? Organizations are individuals. For you to start a company, you register a company as a going concern. When you do that, that organization becomes what? A legal entity. It's actually an individual that can be sued and also can sue. And that's part of the thing we're talking about when we talk about corporate social responsibility. It's talking about ethical responsibilities. And I'm going to focus more on, on that aspect today for us as public relations. Ethical issues when it comes to your responsibility as uh, a public relations professional. And also that corporations have philanthropic components. In other words, like you mentioned earlier, doing things in the community, alleviating pains and making changes in the lives of people in the community. Now, what is public relation? I wouldn't ask questions now because I know all of you know what, I assume all of you know what is public relations. But this is a quote from, a definition from the, pub, in the Chartered Institute of Public Relations. Public relations is the discipline which looks after reputation. Can you see? Reputation. With the aim of earning understanding and support and influencing opinion. Can you see that again? Influencing the opinion, what people think in their mind. And behavior. In other words, there are a group of people you want to influence what they think and you want to make them to behave in a particular way. And that goes back to what I was trying to allude to earlier, that as public <coughs> relations professional, you have power. You have what? Power. I say it again. You have, can we echo it? You have power. So, if you have power, in other words, you can influence the way somebody thinks, 
then you will need to be careful that you are using that power in an ethical way. That you are using the power in the right way. That you as a person, you are standing as uh, a, an arbiter for the society and not necessarily for your company and shareholders as against the, the people. It is planned and sustained effort to establish and maintain goodwill, like which you also alluded to earlier, and mutual understanding between an organization and its publics. So when we say its publics, we're referring to its shareholders. The shareholders involving, including members of staff, including suppliers, including contractors, including the community where the company actually stays, including civic responsibilities, including all agencies and international or local. So that's public relations. Now, ethical orientations. Now, this I, I, is just, a, for me, one of the key things, and I think this is the pillar for our conversation today. Ethical orientations. What is your ethical orientation as a person? Because your ethical orientation will determine how you are going to perform as a public relation professional. The decisions you're going to make, the advice you're going to give to your organizations, or the image you want to project to the public, will be based on your ethical orientation. So, axiological orientation. That stems from the fact, from the belief that human beings have characters. And as they have characters, they have what? Values. Because they have values, they are, there's to be loyalty. And there's that issue of building of trust. Or you could have a geological perspective to life in which you always believe human rights. Human rights is my right. It's, and that will be the driver, can be the lens from which you use to see the world. In everything you do, you come from what? The standpoint of what? Rights. Or it could be teleological in which you are concerned about outcomes. What's the outcome of our decisions? What's the outcome of the image you want to project? What's the, an, an example of this would be like, um, um, I know most of us should know uh, Spider-Man. Do you know Spider-Man? Who does not know Spider-Man here? So, because nobody's raising his or her hand, I assume all of us know Spider-Man. It could be in the fact in which you have Spider-Man to save his wife, which a train is crushing, and a group of children who are in the bus, and there's going to be an accident. Who should Spider-Man save? Who should Spider-Man save? The children. Why the children? More lives there. Now, that's a theological perspective. So you're looking at it as, oh, even though his wife is in jeopardy, well, the bigger picture is the children because you have more lives. And you, have, using the word they will use, they say, greater good. And some people come from that perspective in their role as public relation professionals. They think of the better good, an outcome, and that determines what they do. And the last one could be those who are situational. They tell you, oh, the, life is based on ethical laws, and over time, this keeps changing. So it's based on the situation. We just go as the situation determines. Are we okay? Is there any question at this point? Any thoughts? Any thoughts? None. Okay. Maybe I'll get my question at the end. So, 
where do you fall in this fall paradigm? Where do you fall? I'm not really sure. You're not really I'm sure? A little bit of all of them, really. All of them, okay. Of the essence of this lecture is after this lecture, you go back and know, okay, who am I? Yeah. That's my conclusion, you see. So you'll be able to know where you're coming from, and that will determine even as you, as you go in life and even in your studies. Now, the ethical orientation is actually being ethically literate, which is the ability to recognize the ethical choices that public relations professionals face and the ethical philosophies that guide those choices. So we have looked at those four philosophies that guide decisions. So it's now to know as a person, as a professional, where do I fall in between these silos, if you like. Now, I mentioned Grunig earlier. Now, Grunig mentioned the issue of ethics and the public relations models. And this is Grunig's perspective. Now, the fact that I've chosen Grunig does not mean that I'm saying he's the best out of all the models. But you would agree with me. I've already said I've used Grunig before. So you could understand my, my soft spot <laughs> when I was trying to look for models of, of um, uh, public relations. And this is Bruni's idea of public relations in which the, I said initially that as public relations professional or com public communications professional, you have power. And when you have power, how are you using that in the space of influencing the public? And this is Grunig's perspective of the models if you like, of persuasion. How do you persuade? How do you influence the people, the society, <coughs> to be able to, whatever reason, based on those four philosophical paradigms we saw initially. So where do you, when you are doing your persuasion, what's at the back or the front of your mind, not at the back of your mind? Quickly, we'll look at tests. Now, this is um, a, a proposition by Baker and Mattison, 2001, that says, as a corporate, community, uh, corporate communication specialist or public relations specialist, whatever, assuming now that you got a job as the public relations manager for... You are about to try to give me a name? Oh, I'm sorry, man. Come again? <laughs> Come again? Sorry, I said my belly rumbling. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let, that's, that's a name. <laughs> belly rumbling ex corporation. Maybe you got a job as belly rumbling corporation that, that has you know, a big organization and big things. Now, are you are responsible for. Oh, that's a good one. Belly rumbling corporation that is involved with production of ammunitions. And you are the image maker. You are the public relations person. And your role and responsibility is to send out what? Information to do what? Information if he is a public relations officer. What will be his role based on your previous definition of CSR. To try and control what I'm thinking? To, to try and control what you're thinking that having ammunition, which is guns, AK-47, is good, is for the public good, isn't it? Am I doing something to your mind? <laughs> Am I? I hope I have, and I hope what I'm doing is good. <laughs> I hope I'm doing this good, but I'm trying to make you to see how this works. So at the point in which you're given that responsibility and you have a message to convey to the society, Baker and Madison are saying this could be a framework that could help you to decide what you're going to say. Truthfulness is your message true. When you say, oh, owning a gun does not affect anybody. Is that true? Is it true? 
It keeps you safe. So if the problem is not the person that holds the gun, but the person that is shot with the gun. Have you had <coughs> some kind of respect before? Have you? <coughs> now, when you are given that responsibility, is your message truthful? Is there sufficient information for the audience to make an informed decision on the issue? Not the informed decision you want them to have and what you want them to think, but actually the truth, the real truth. So when you say, if you, I'm sorry to use this example, if you follow during the American debates, you know, the NRA in America is, is a key thing, the gun association, the rifle association, they are, they are power brokers. And when you hear those kind of things being spoiled out, do you know the NRA would have a public relations professional? Do you know that? Or you don't know? Every organization have a public relations person working for them. Do you know that even you as an individual, you have a public relations assistant, even though you might not know that? Do you know that? You don't? Oh, somebody will speak on your behalf to say, Hi, what's the name again? Harley. Oh, hi, Nisha. Have you met Harley before? Harley is very wonderful. She, she, she will help you. She's very obedient. At that point in time, you're just a friend introducing you. That person is what? Is your public relation what? Assistant. Assistant. Because this person, without being paid, is actually changing the image, <laughs> the perception. So even as individuals, there are people that influences, that talks about us. But is the message truthful? Is it authentic when you are trying to persuade people? What's the communicator's motive? What's your motive? Will someone other than the communicator benefit from this message? Respect. Does the message communicate respect for the audience? Equity of the persuasive appeal. Does the message take advantage of the public's vulnerability? And the good one there, social responsibility for common good, which goes back to the teleological perspective, the common good. Spider-Man should save the children, the bus full of children, and should forget about his wife. He just, <laughs> even if they've been married for just for 25 years, he should just forget about her and what? Go for the common good that benefits the, the society. All right. So at this point, you should have some things popping. You should have some... What do you think based on what you've been saying? Yes. You don't know? Okay, then you, it means you pass it to your friend. <laughs> Which pass? Now, based on the word you we stated earlier, where do you find yourself in those? Is it axiological? Is it teleological? Or deontological? Or situational? Where do you see yourself? In your worldview. Maybe teleological. Teleological, okay. So you believe in that bigger worldview, the better good of the society. So, but what of if the organization you're working for uh, is involved in some things which are, like we gave example before, rifle? Or if we can give another example to say, um, All of us, we are good enough. We are all putting on clothes. Great. So, the big chain, we bought these clothes from somewhere. So, where was this clothes made? How much did the people that made the clothes, were they paid the fair share of the amount that they should actually earn for the time they spent making the clothes? And you are now the image maker that's supposed to sell these clothes and give a better picture. Are you getting the point now? It's actually, it's more, it's, it's a, a very challenging dilemma, isn't it? You don't know where, where you need to be. But the key thing 
and I hope you are taking it from this discussion today, is to know who you are, know where you, where you sit, know your worldview, and how does that shape your responsibility as a public relations professional. Because you've got the whole life ahead of yourself, and there will be decisions you'll be making. So quickly, let's look at some examples. Now, as I've given a practical example of uh, belly rubbing, rifle association, and um, you are the public relations officer of the Rumbling Association, and that's just a fictitious example, but let's look at real life situations of ethical failures. Now, Enron, the scandal in 2001 in the United States of America, Enron overstated his profit. But Enron, <coughs> sure does have a public relations manager. And based on the work of the public relations manager, actually, Enron won Corporate Social Responsibility Awards. Because the manager was able to do what? Change the thinking of the Yeah. Change the perception and the way people see Enron. But it went bust because of ethical issues. I hope you are seeing what, what we're trying to see. It's just for you to be able to have this at the, at the front of your mind, to try and see the, the dilemma of being a public relations practitioner in the 21st century. There's a dilemma, there's a challenge. So you have to, you have to choose where you're going to be in that particular situation. Satyam an Indian company. The name of the company, Satya, means what? Means what? Truth. truth. But the company was not saying the truth. You remember, the, you remember this? The force is what? <laughs> Truthfulness in the message. Also, Satya also has a public relations manager whose responsibility is to launder the image of the company in the society. So imagine yourself being the, in that role, and imagine, uh, God forbid, that the company went boss, and you're the public relations manager. So how will you be feeling? You, you're cringing, is it? <laughs> She's cringing. Just, just imagining it is that, oh, how would it be? That as the public relations manager, you've done 10 years as the, as the, you know, the image maker, and then this bad news happened in the news. How would that be? But the key thing here is when it comes to corporate social responsibility or when it comes to ethical situations, you are not forced to take it. You decide where you want to pitch your tent. The global economic meltdown in 2008, where banks, you know, for each of those banks, they were public relations managers, and they had decisions. And there are things they also tell us to influence the way we look at their banks. Nike, in 1973, the International Labor Council ensured that there was no, what? No child labor. Children should not be you, and I alerted a fact earlier about the clothes we are all putting on. Where is your clothes made from, who were those who made the clothes, and did, were they actually paid the fair share of, of that. <coughs> Volkswagen. Imagine you are the public relations manager for Volkswagen. <laughs> and actually, the company has been telling lies about its oxide emissions. Why? Because they want to sell. So they were fined 17 billion in fines and settlements. So the point I'm making is that as a corporation, and that goes back to what we started with, the quotes, corporations do not have a soul. Who does have a soul? People the people that work there. So if the people that work there, whatever they do, ethically or unethically, it's the people. But oftentimes, the, the, 
the people always want us to feel that it's the company and not us. ExxonMobil. Now, ExxonMobil, as of 1981, knew that climate change, the production, fossil fuel, affects climate change. But they spent $30 million, which is about 20.3 million pounds, to misinform. And somebody was the public relations manager <laughs> whose responsibility it was to do what? Misinform. Ensure that the public do not hear about this so that we can make more money. So maybe you are going to be, if you, imagine you were the public relations manager. They just called, called you to the office and say, we know that Fossil fuel affects climate change, but we don't want the public to what? To think and know about that. So here is a, here is a, a budget of $500 million. <coughs> Get to work. Ensure that everybody on the planet at seven points, whatever, 0 0.2, 0 0.3 billion people think that extra mobile is doing the right thing. There's no climate change. So get to work. How would you do it? Leave. You leave. <laughs> I hope. Would Would you leave? Five hundred million. Wow. And you, you know, you're having good life. You know. For these are the issues which we want you to consider. And that's what I want you to take away from this talk. Is what are your choices? What are your values? What are your values? Your values will determine the choices you make as a professional. Toshiba, Toshiba Rada, in Japan, also overstated profit seven eighty million over several years. And uh, an example there is phase state of Greece. Greece was a phase state. You know, Greece also will have a minister for what? Communication, a minister for information, a minister who is responsible, who is a public relation specialist. And the person's responsibility is to what? Is to ensure that the people in the nation do not think that the government are doing. <laughs> have you been there? Have you really heard some things from some nations and some you wonder, is this person okay? <laughs> is this person thinking? You keep why is he saying what he's saying? So values. 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 All right. So, what's your view on the corporation? What's the name? Kyle. Kyle. What's your view on the corporation? Is the co corporation serving the public interest or serving private wealth? Private wealth. Why did you say private wealth? Because they are, they are, they are, product, they are, they are producing employment, they are providing employment for people, they're providing income for people, people are able to have money to take care of their families, to do things, society, to pay tax to the government. So why do you say private? Because the objective of an organization is to make money. Is to make money. But to make money for the public good. The more money we have, the more good we can do in this society. Are you flustered? <laughs> Are you confused by what I'm saying? No, no. So you still insist that it's for private wealth? Yeah, like if I start a business, it's going to be for wealth rather than serving public interest. Okay. Do you agree? Do you agree? Do you agree with it? Do you? Um, a little bit. A little bit. Oh, Let's know that little bit. How? I just pushed that to you because I wanted you to think. In actual fact, businesses operate to make wealth, which is why they go into business. But the question and what we want us to think, we are not saying making wealth or making money is evil, but the question is 
How will you make the money? Are you getting my point? How would your decision be just make the money irrespective of whatever the... Like some people, in one nation, they want to make money, and so they create, they use false medicines, and they, they sell false medication. Some sell expired, okay, expired things. They want to make money. So when you are at that point, what is it? The four strands of where you fall in comes into picture. All right. Now, for me as a person, as a corporate social responsibility professional, uh, for the past five years, I've been involved in projects, a series of projects, and um, these are some of the ones which uh, the first three actually are things that came just barely a year plus since last year. Abadin Lincoln Lives provides tackles, social isolation, and loneliness. And you could check out the, our website, abadinlinkinglives.org. And that's to ensure that people are not lonely. We send volunteers to visit people who are the elderly in their homes. CAP Job Club. Also, we run a job club in which we help people to find employment, to find a job, we could take them through coaching. And all those things are basically free. You don't pay money. Some, Of course, some people will be responsible for it. But it's part of providing a better society, helping people who have issues to have their problems sorted out. Restorative justice, helping those people who are guests to our majesty. There are some people who are guests to our majesty, Peter Heed, and ensuring that there's able, they can be able to have reflection and transformation of their character, and also for those who come out of our majesty's place in Peter Heed, to ensure that they are integrated back into the society and also their family, that their family are able to visit these people and be able to ensure that there's no repeat offending. Repeat offending causes the government nine to 13 billion pounds every year. So try to, you know, well with this project is try to help to stem that uh, expenses. And there's Porter's Hand, which is a, a program has been running for the 21 years that helps those who are having substance abuse and alcohol and substance abuse, trying to help them to come out of that and be reintegrated back into the society and to make impact. Some of them have been, are now employed with MNS, some of them are now into becoming ministers of the gospel, some of them are actually owning their own business and running their own business who have been able to go through that project. So these are some of those examples of some of the uh, uh, projects we run in Aberdeen. And you could by this also not know where my theological stance is as a person, isn't it? Because that gives you... Um... So, in run it says, ethics is a code of values which guide our choices and actions and determine the purpose and the course of our lives. And that's what we're saying in this lecture. What are your values? Because those who determine uh, your choices, your actions, and your purpose and the cause of your life. So by conclusion, discover who you are because it determines your choices, your actions, your purpose, and the cause of your life as a public relations practitioner. There's a need for you to determine that. So thank you so much. Thank you. That's the end of my question. Thank you. I have a question. So you mentioned your thesis, your PhD thesis focuses around CSR. Yep. Was it a case study that you had? Okay, yeah, it was a case study. I did have a case study. Now, when we talk of case studies, case studies help to bring to life, you know, you can be able to look at all the things you're looking at in that particular context. So I had a case study. I had a case study. I was looking at a country 
Nigeria as case study, and I was specifically looking at the relationship of companies in the Niger Delta. So that was my case study for the for that research. So you were looking at CSR. Yeah. Was that in regards to oil? It, it is re in regard to the activities of the oil companies, the companies in that particular environment. What's their CSR activities? How are they going about the CSR activities? What's the motive for their CSR activities? Is it just to create PR and make us think we are doing something good or were they actually doing something? What were the dominant motives? Well, the dominant motives, like I told us, is wealth. Make more money. So even when they do, P when they do CSR, it's not because they want to actually do CSR, it's because they want to also believe that they are doing a better good in the society. So there's no sincerity in what they are doing. Because if there is actually sincerity, they would do some of those CSR without even any press release. So strategic. Yeah. Yeah. Without any press release, and we will be able to see transformation. But when you do CSR in which you are looking for can you snap us and we put it in the newspaper and say, oh, we are doing a good thing, uh, you know? Then that is just to change the perception of people. While money is still being made, <coughs> the environment is still being decimated, lives, livelihood are still being destroyed, and without, <coughs> without that. Somebody should have a question from the back. Who will bear the cat? Do you have a question? Um, so there's a lot of responsibility on companies to kind of do that themselves. Do you think there should be more laws that they have to um, engage in CSR activities? Uh, well, I, this is my, my own take. I think there are laws. So the fact is not more laws is the issue of adherence to the law. Because we have seen the four, the four routes in which way companies think. So it's the people that should be thinking. So laws are there. But do we actually adhere to the laws? And like I give you a practical example of the a, a gun, like a belly rumbling corporation in which that says, Oh, the guns are not the problem. It's the people who are actually behaving unruly. Because they are behaving unruly, so we need to keep them. So we need the guns to be able to ensure that they don't behave unruly. <coughs> Did I answer your question? Laws are there. It's the adherence to the laws. And this now is in the responsibility of the people, the individuals. Because corporations or companies are not just companies, they're actually individuals who take these decisions. How do you measure the success of a CSR strategy? Mm. Can you? I think you can. Now, when you say success of a CSR strategy, mm -hmm. is it in line with corporate communications or just CSR on its own? Corporate communication. So, if a corporation has a specific CR strategy, mm. how would you then measure that? Now, if a company has a, a, a CSR strategy which is in line with corporate communications, it it would be that what's the objective of the organization? Mm -hmm. the, the the CSR strategy must align with the company's public relations and image and what they want to their aim and objectives. <laughs> And if that's been done, using the, the test, that example, we can, we can know actually if the message we are putting out, if actually we are doing the right thing. Now, but you know, I've said that is the corporate objective. The question is, is the corporate objective to the better good of the society? or to make more money for the shareholders, irrespective of whoever is affected or impacted. And I don't know if that's answered your question. No, I mean, we've covered, you know, different 
different sta stances of CSR, so okay. that you, you have basically, and when you challenged uh, Kyle there, mm. yeah, Kyle challenged you back, which was good. Yeah. Um, can I just ask, you mentioned Howell. Yep. So in your thesis, were you looking at a particular theorist around power? Yeah. Yeah, I, I was, in, when I mentioned power, I was trying to look at Foucault. Mm -hmm. Now, because of the work of Foucault and what he's done with power, with gender, mm -hmm. the media, and some of the work that um, is, is considered. So I was trying to look at uh, power, uh, looking at the fact that when companies do CSR, actually they are using the CSR as a means of power to change our perception. They are using the, the CSR and the pictures, the, 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 almost in front of the newspaper, the whole page that is paid for is to change our perception of the way in which we see them and to think that we are, they are doing good in society. So I read something which is very interesting uh, of a football, uh, do I have time quickly? Uh, a football, it just, uh, one of these, maybe I'll send you this slide, one of the, in the, yeah, the last one there, if you can check on that website, you will get quite some good um, uh, information. Now of, a, comp a football team that lost, they lost the competition and they were supposed to have won the competition. So because they lost the competition and because of that, you know, the news will be a, a buzz with what? They lost, isn't it? Quickly, what did the PR person, what did you think he, he or she did? Tried to change the perception. That's the point. He or she tried to change the perception. Quickly, he or she went to the hospital to the cancer ward where you have the children and brought the coach to come and say they're doing good and have them to snap picture with the sick children so that when that goes into the newspaper, what do you think will happen? <coughs> People will forget about the loss of the match. They'll be thinking, oh, they're taking care of children. But the question is the child that they met, are they actually taking care of children were they actually sincere that they're concerned about the children? They're only looking for opportunity to have pictures. And that's where the issue of power comes into play. So that PR person who decided that decision knows that he or she has what? I can change how they think. So what do I do to, to change their perception? And that's, you need to know that you have power, but Power must be used responsibly. You must use your power responsibly. And that, I think, is the crux of this whole talk. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you.